Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. My name is Brother Jose Luis Solis Torres. I'm 27 years old and I was born and raised in Brooklyn and I am a revert to Islam. And uh, I will be composing videos inshallah of my story, my regret, my revert, like before I reverted, as I was reverting, and after I'm revert, after, after I reverted, right? So here's my story, and um, inshallah, bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Um, well, it started as a search for discipline, right? Because I was very, very undisciplined as just a person. I was just a very undisciplined person. I took so much for granted because I was arrogant. Because I was born with so much, it was very easy for me to, to just like take things for granted because I never really understood the value of, of a lot. So out of high school, you know, I was very arrogant. I was on top of the world. I thought, you know, nothing can touch me. I went from not almost not graduating high school to just completing two years in about a year, a year, yeah, just about a year, a, year, a calendar year, I did two grades. So I thought I was the man. I was like, man, I could do anything. So I graduated high school and I went right into college. And in college, man, the world hit me. <laughs> you know, I was just, I would party, I would gamble, I would drink. I got caught up with girls and gambling, drinking, and girls. Not a good combo for a 20 year old man. Not a good combination. And, you know, needless to say, it, it got a grip of me, you know? The hunger for money to gamble, like I would gamble six, seven days a week. Every night I would play cards. I would just caught up, you know, trying to make money, trying to hustle, you know? Everything, everything. I would stay out all night drinking, playing cards, smoking, talking to girls in the day, you know, like trying to live that that life, the hustler life, you know what I'm saying? Um, and <sighs> gambling grabbed me. Man, gambling is tough, tough business, man. And uh, trying to make money every day, just hustling, 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 playing cards always, constantly, six, seven days a week. I went from playing basketball every day, six, I'm um, playing basketball every day, to gambling every day. And that was just like, I went from being a lifelong athlete to not touching a basketball for two years, maybe three years. And that was just like shocking. To anybody that knew me, that was just like, what, Jose doesn't have a basketball in his hand? That's that's a lot, you know. I wouldn't touch beer as a kid because I was like, man, I'm 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 a I'm an athlete, you know what I'm saying? That was always my thing. I was like, nah, I'm a basketball player. I don't want it to mess me up. Sure, I'd have a drink here and there. I am Mexican, you know. When you're Mexican, you see drinking from the day you come out the womb. Uh, you know, it's funny. Me, and my I had a conversation with one of my cousins, and I was like, hey, man, do you ever remember us getting together as a family when we were kids and there not being cards or drinking? around and he was like no and I was like man that's crazy right so that just goes to show you like how I came up with my family and everything so let me uh, go back to my story about me in college and then I got caught up you know and I was like Phew. two years passed by in college and I was like man you're way smarter than your GPA Jose why aren't you where you're supposed to be because I would gamble all night long I would Come into class, you know, hung like hung over or just high. I would be in class high, you know, being dumb just because I thought it was funny. Like, oh, it's funny to be in class high, so let's smoke weed and go to class. You know, it's just stupid, stupid stuff like that. I it, I I was more focused in listening to the girl in the front row than listening to the teacher. I was more focused on like, oh, she's cute. I gotta sit next to her somehow. I gotta get here early to sit next to a girl as opposed to come here early to listen to class. And I was just a stupid arrogance in me, just being dumb, like thinking that I could do anything and everything whenever I wanted to. Wasn't so, man. Wasn't so. So I wisened up a little and I stopped going to school because I knew that like, yo, I wasn't in the right frame of mind to be in class. And uh, now it was like, I have no reason to wake up in the morning. Now I'm gonna stay up all night into like 10, 11 o'clock sometimes playing cards. And that was tough, man. It took a toll on me. I hit rock bottom when I was in the school. I was like, man, I'm not even progressing in any way, shape, or form. 
just gambling. I looked around one night and I was like, man, there's like a bunch of 45, 50 year old guys here just stuck on a table. Like, that's how I felt. I felt stuck. I felt stuck in life. I was like, man, I'm not going anywhere. What the, f what am I doing? You know, it was just like, man, and then I started thinking about my family. My mother and father immigrated here from Mexico. Like, they, they crossed the border. Like, you see on Border Watch's Border Patrol? Yeah, one day that was my father. One day that was my mother. On numerous occasions, as a matter of fact, before they became legal, that's what they did. They just crossed over because they had to. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to let their kids starve. So they risked life and limb to come here to the United States of America. And I was like, man, what are you doing? Like, your parents risked their life for you to become a gambler? For you to hustle? For you to... To take from people, pretty much. I was like, man, stop it. So I was like, all right, cool. You know what? Let me go back to school. I'm going to go back to school. I'm not doing my parents any justice. I started thinking about my little sister, my little sister, Lizbeth. Um, she's a year younger than me. I always call her my little sister because she's forever my little sister because she's forever going to be young. She's forever going to be younger than me. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, she had a tough, tough life. Tough, tough life. My sister's a tough girl. She, uh, she's a lifelong epileptic, so not pretty much from the age of five. She's 26 now. So she's been catching uncontrollable seizures since she's five. There was times in school where she was in the hospital more than she was in class in a given year, school year. You know, I don't think my sister was ever in school for more, for a month straight, ever. And I was just like, man, you know, I started thinking about her and I was like, damn. And, and I looked up at God. I was like, really God? Like. This was two and a half, three years ago. I looked I looked up. She caught a seizure. I was like, damn, she's like 24, 23. Just let her be. Let her be, man. Why didn't you just, why didn't you just, I was upset. I was really mad. I was like, man, my little sister again. She's like, she's a grown up now. Let her be. And I realized right then and there, yo, God can't let her be. And I was questioning myself. I was like, why do I have so much talent? I'm wasting it. And my sister, she's, she's like begging to stay out the hospital. And I'm wasting all this talent, and it hit me, man. The reason why Rabina, God gave me all this talent, because he couldn't give it to my little sister. And here I am, pissing it away at a stupid card table. Chasing girls. For what? What does that do? How does that help my family? Everybody. Don't help nobody. I was living life just for myself. And if you're out there living life for yourself, I'm telling you right now, you need nothing to that. Success just for yourself ain't success. That's my word as a man. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, I gotta get back to school. I gotta figure this stuff out. I can't. I'm not. I'm not going down like this. I, I I'm not going down like that. In my head. I made that decision. I'm not going down like that. I went back to school, man, and just yo, got done with school, man. Done. You know, I changed my major. I decided to become a justice study major, and you know, alhamdulillah, that was that was that was the plan for God. You know, God was like, man, come study justice, what it is to be just, you know, what it is to, to understand justice. So the nature of, of justice, because it has so many different angles to be viewed from, you have to view it from different perspectives. So subhanAllah, one day we were studying how Islam looks at justice, Sharia law, and I was sitting there and I was in class and in my head I was just listening to, to a conversation and the teacher was going over a, a scholar who I wish I knew his name but for some reason I just didn't listen so a gentleman asked the scholar why are you guys so so strict why are you guys so strict which why I don't get it there's no point in being so strict so the Muslim scholar goes look this is the reason why I'm so strict he's like if you look at the scales of justice from afar imagine my hands to be the scales of justice He's like, right here, they look even, right? But he's like, if you grab a dot of water and you put it dead in the middle, guarantee it goes one way or another. And he's like, that sway can be the difference between eternal, eternal fire and eternal bliss. He's like, that's what we're playing for. That little bit, that's why we're so disciplined. And in my head, I was like, whoa. So I'm talking about, man. <laughs> That's what it is, man. SubhanAllah, man. Allah right there. Just put it in my heart right there. Bang. I was like, look, check this out. And right then and there, I was like, man, I got to look into Islam. I have to. This is, this is maybe the answer to my, dis my problems with discipline in life. This can take me to that next level. So, you know, 
as a matter of fact, that same semester, I, 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 I met a sister named Norhem Basuni, who now is like, man, she's a special place in my heart. And I asked her for an English translated version of the Quran, and of course, she was probably dancing in the back of her head like, yes, major, major hasanet, major rewards, because if you help somebody convert, all their good deeds that they do in their life goes back onto you and they've judgment. So it's kind of like, yeah. So, inshallah, I make her proud and many good deeds that'll fall onto her. So she gave me, and then I started reading it a little bit, but it was more of a superficial read. It wasn't like, oh my God, I was touched and that was it. I was a Muslim. No, 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 no. So I graduated school, man. And subhanAllah, through the grace of God, I got back. I just graduated. I graduated and I was like, yes, that's it. That's what I'm talking about, man. I'm done with school. You know, I was real high on myself. You know, I got a little arrogant again. I'm not going to lie. Got a little arrogant. And in the back of my head, I was like, man, this life is not this good. Like, it was really, really good. Like, I was on top of the world. You know, many people were like, yo, just this nigga's never going to graduate. You know, he's been in school for like 13 years. Never graduated, you know. I was like Van Wilder, you know, if you guys are familiar with that movie. So I finally graduated and I was real high. And in the back of my head, I couldn't help but to think like, man, there's something wrong. Like, life is not this good. Something's going to happen. And did. I got hit hard. Boom. Life hit me very hard. And um, my hero, my father, coming up, man, he was my hero. He, he fell from grace. He went from up here down here and like I didn't know how to react I just went into this deep depression like this can't be life it's my dad like it's my superhero superheroes don't don't do stuff like that and uh stuck again I was like man what, am I, what do I do you know and I, t I was in there like in my room and uh subhanAllah it was right around Ramadan and I was like uh you know what, God, if this is it, like, if you're as powerful as people say you are, if you're as incredible and all-knowing and all this, you know, that was my attitude at the time. If this is really, if you're as great, as incredible as people say you are, then you're going to help me through it, right? I, I, I'll fast, I'll fast, I'll choose to fast, right? And I've never done this. I've never been in close quarters with a Muslim. I really don't know what I'm doing, you know? I relied on little tips from Norhan and and she gave me websites to look at like how to say the Fatiha and you know but at the time I don't know what anything was. At the time I was just like man I just want to fast see what's up. You know like this is really it. Let me show me how powerful you are. That was my attitude. You know looking back it was like you nut. <laughs> what's wrong with you man? That's God. Of course he's going to show you and God was probably like me. What fool? <laughs> show you. And subhanAllah, man, the first three or four days were tough, but you know, I was like, nah, nah, nah I could do this, I could do this. It became a challenge, and you know, let's just do it. It's a challenge, let's take it on. And I was like, man, some days I was like, I'm starving, what the hell, I'm really doing this? I'd get a text, so I looked down, you know, and then my attention would go. Then, like, hours later, I'm like, damn, I'm thirsty. I would hear a random noise, and I would turn. My attention would be gone. I would think again later on. I was like, damn, it's 8.30. I want to eat already. My dad would call me. Like, then I was like, man, what, what's going on? You know, by like day four or five, I'm like, yo, this, this isn't a coincidence. And I was like, it's real. This is really real. And after that, I was like, all right, let me stick this out. Let me see if it continues. And subhanAllah, I continued, man, and I was like, yo, this is it. One day I broke my fast, I felt like such a useless fool. Useless fool. I was like, this is proof, man, that you're not disciplined, bro. You have everything right here in front of you, then to throw it away? Why? Seriously, why? That was proof of it, man. And, uh, been a Muslim ever since, man, and, uh, Inshallah, in my next video, I'll let you guys know what happens after that Ramadan, man. Because I still got to explain to my mom. I still got My mom's a devout, super-duper Christian. So, that was next. Still had to cut everything out of my life. But, I had proof that Allah was the way. Islam was the way. So, Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.